Hello everyone, and welcome to the second installment of Carlson Power Tools in under 10 minutes. I'm Gary Rosen, Carlson's Regional Sales Director for Canada, although some of you may know me as Professor Landnut. Thanks to all of you who watched the first installment, I really appreciate it. I did that one on the awesome Polyline Elevation Editor, and I hope it was helpful. So no kidding, about a week after I did that, I needed to cut a hole in the side of my shed to install a wood stove. I'm turning it into a workshop, and I needed to cut a, a nice big round hole between two studs, and um, I was working inside the shed, and I started working on the hole and uh, had limited space so I was working with this, and I was sawing a hole through there and doing my best. And then all of a sudden, I went, wait a minute. If I go outside, then the studs are not in the way, and I can use this. So I got to work with that, made a perfectly round hole, no time, great job. That's a power tool. Get the idea? For this month's power tool, we're going to look at the RoadNet app found in Carlson Civil, Construction, and Takeoff. When you talk about Carlson tool, power tools, RoadNet really can't be ignored. So I'm going to show you a simple project, and then you can take it from there. Okay, let's go. I'm going to start PL for polyline, and start one here, bring it up into this area here, and drag it off here. We'll start a second one, and we're going to use a nearest O-snap to tie to the first one. That's all it takes to create an intersection, is that they are connected geometrically with an O-snap. We'll put in a second road, close it in on the first one. Now we're ready to go. We're going to start up road network. We'll create a new road network called Power 2. And on the side dialog that comes up is where we'll do all of our work. Okay, let's start with our settings. Our existing surface that we're going to target for slopes is original ground. For the output, we're going to triangulate and contour a new surface, and we're going to call that surface Power to Roads. That's going to be a tin of all of our entire road network. That's all we need to do to get started. Now, let's add a screen pick of this polyline. Give it a name. We'll call it Balsam. As a centerline file, it'll create a profile with the same name. Let's take a look at it in the editor. OK, looks good. Let's fit a curve, and let's go ahead and put in an 80 meter radius on that curve. Looks good. Save and exit. For the profile, we take a look, and there it put in a proposed profile. Let's put in a PVI. We're going to add a PVI right here in the low spot, and we'll make that vertical curve 100 meters. See what that looks like. Looks good. If we want to change it, we grab this editing tool, hold the mouse button, and drag and drop it wherever we want. Incredibly flexible, easy to use road design tool. Okay, save and exit. Now we just need a template. Let's make a new template and we're gonna call it Power 2. Now again, you would typically have a library of templates, but I wanna quickly show you how to get started. So first, we're gonna set our top surface of the grades. We're gonna go minus 2% cross slope, for four meters, we'll call that the pavement. We're good to go. There's our first one. Let's put a subgrade under there, and we'll say from the center line, we're going to go 0.08 meters. That's our asphalt from the distance, four meters, and asphalt. Okay, good to go. And you'll see that added. Now let's put some gravel under there. We'll ask the gravel to continue until it hits something. Start at the center line, the offset from the top, everything measured from the top, 0.3 meters. Start with the four meter and say gravel for the second subgrade. And we have the second subgrade. Okay, let's throw in a curb. Got these to pick from. You can change the dimensions. We're just gonna take the standard that it comes with for now and throw some curbs on there. 
Now let's put a little panel behind the curb. We'll go 1% back towards the road for one meter. We'll call that grass. And now we have a, a panel behind the grass. Now we just need to do our cut and fill. We'll say if it's in a cut condition, go at three to one. And if it finds itself in a fill condition, also go to th at three to one. It shows what we've got going and you can get much more complicated, but that's not a bad template to get started with. Save and exit. So we have our 2D, our 3D, and our template. Let's process it and see what happens. The software's calculating and building the first road, generating the contours, generating 3D polylines to represent the road that we can use for other purposes, and we should be ready to go. Let's take a look at that tin. View, 3D, surface, and look at power roads, power two roads, and there's our first roadway built in 3D, different components for the different parts of the template, incredibly easy, can do that just that quickly. Okay, let's add another road. Add another road, screen pick this polyline, assign a name to this. Let's call this Oak Street. It'll generate a profile for us. The center line, here's the editor. Let's go ahead and fit a curve 35 meters here. And then let's go to the next intersection, the next corner there. And we'll fit another curve with, again, a 35 meter radius. Looks good. And we'll save and exit. When we look at the profile for the second road, we see that it ties into the first road, not into existing ground. That's because they're connected and it knows what it needs to do. Let's go ahead and throw in some PVIs. Okay, we'll do this one here. We'll go with a 50 meter vertical curve there. And let's add another one up here. And we'll do this one at 75 meters. And again, if we don't like the results, we can easily just drag wherever we want to edit the design. Save and exit. We'll use the same template, and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and process that. Now we have both roads. Does the intersections, solves all everything horizontally and vertically, and contours the new model and we're good to go. There it is, and it's finished. Can zoom in and show you what we've got going so far. Okay, let's throw a cul-de-sac. Add a cul-de-sac. We'll put it on the end of balsam, and let's go ahead and use a 18 meter radius, and let's do eight meter for the fillet radius, the curb return. Okay, process one more time. There's our cul-de-sac. There's our two roads, and the model is complete of this simple project. Let's take a look at it in 3D. View, 3D, Surface File Viewer, there it is, and that's what we just built. There's the cul-de-sac, there's the roads, there's the intersections, all the grading is done, quite remarkable. Now, in the viewer, let's go ahead and add a second surface. Let's put original ground in so we can see that as well. There it is, and you can see we have the fill in that area. Well, let's go ahead and take original ground, change the opacity, and make it a little more transparent so we can see our roadway. And that is a power tool. Okay, now let's exit here. Let's check our volumes. Here's the report, and we see that we're pretty heavy on the cut and light on the fill. So we would start making adjustments to this based on that information. The other thing that we can do in our output is under output options, we can write a serve CE stakeout. We'll go ahead and give this a name. We'll call it power two. And this file, which is called an RNF, can be loaded onto your data collector and the entire project, horizontal, vertical, slope staking, everything in one single file loaded onto your data collector. So that is RoadNet. That's a power tool. Give it a try. See what you can do. Keep us posted. And we'll see you next month. Thanks very much.